Hello, hello. Continuing on with some reading. I just thought that we should try and make it to halfway through the talk today. And so we are continuing on. And let me just get into a comfortable position so I can sit still and read. And um, we left off last time just earlier with the mind. We've gone through seeing and hearing and then to the mind. And now um, the text is changing up a little bit, uh, talking about beginner's exercises. And um, that's, gonna, that's what we're going to be continuing on with right now. Okay, so here we go. The beginner's exercise. It has already been explained that the actual method of, of practice in vipassana meditation is to note or to observe or to contemplate the successive occurrences of seeing, hearing and so on at the six sense doors. However, it will not be possible for a beginner to follow uh, these on all success incidents as they occur because his mindfulness, sati, uh, concentration, samadhi, and knowledge, pan, uh, jnana, are still very weak. The moments of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and thinking occur very swiftly. It seems that seeing occurs at the same time as hearing, that hearing occurs at the same time as seeing, and that seeing, uh, that seeing and hearing occur simultaneously, that seeing, hearing, thinking, and imagining always occur simultaneously, because they occur so swiftly, it is not possible to distinguish which occurs first and second. In reality, seeing does not occur at the same time as hearing, nor does hearing occur at the same time as seeing. Such incidents can occur only one at a time. A yogi or a practitioner who has just begun the practice and who has not sufficiently developed his mindfulness, concentration and knowledge will not, however, be in a position to observe all these moments singly as they occur in serial order. 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 A, a beginner need not, therefore, follow up on many things. He needs to begin with only a few things. Seeing or hearing occurs only when due attention is given to their objects, if one does not pay heed to any sight or sound, one may pass the time without any moments of seeing or hearing taking place. Smelling rarely occurs. The experience of tasting can only occur while one is eating. In the case of seeing, hearing, smelling and tasting, the yogi or practitioner, or meditator, can note them when they occur. Bodily impressions, however, are ever-present. They usually exist distinctly at all time. During the time that one is sitting, the body, the body impressions of stiffness or the sensation of hardness in this position is distinctly felt 
Attention should therefore be fixed on the sitting posture and and note made a sitting, sitting, sitting. Sitting. Sitting is an erect posture of the body, consisting of a series of physical activities induced by consciousness consisting of a series of mental activities. It is just like the case of an inflated rubber ball which maintains its round shape through the resistance of the air inside it. The posture of sitting is similar in that the body is kept in an erect posture throughout Okay, so I just lost the text. Okay, so here. The posture of sitting is similarly in that the body is kept in an erect posture through the continuous process of physical activities. A good deal of energy is required to pull up and keep in an, in an erect position, such as heavy load as this body. People generally assume that the body is lifted and kept in an upright position by means of sinews. This assumption is correct in a sense because sinews, blood, flesh and bones are nothing but materiality. The element of stiffening which keep the body in an erect posture belongs to a group of materiality and arises in the sinew, flesh, blood, etc. throughout the body like air in a rubber ball. The element of stiffening is the air element, known as Vayu Dattu. The body is kept in an erect position by the air element in the form of stiffening which is continually coming into existence. At the time of sleep, sleepiness or drowsiness, one may drop flat because the supply of new materials in the form of stiffening is cut off. The state of mind in heavy drowsiness or sleep is bawanga, the life continuum or passive subconscious flow. During the course of Bawanga, mental activities are absent and, for this reason, the body lies flat during sleep or heavy drowsiness. During waking hours, strong and alert, mental activities are continually arising and, because of, the, of these The air element arises serially and in the form of stiffening. In order to note these facts, it is essential to note the bodily posture attentively as sitting, sitting, sitting. This does not necessarily mean that the body impressions of stiffening should be particularly should particularly be searched for and noted. Attention need only be fixed on the whole form of the sitting posture, that is, the lower portion of the body in a bent circular form and the upper portion held erect. It may be found that the exercise of observing the mere sitting position is too easy. and does not require much effort. In these circumstances, energy or virya is less and concentration, samadhi, is in excess. One will generally feel lazy and not want to carry on the noting as sitting, 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 repeatedly for a considerable length of time. Laziness generally occurs when there is an excess of concentration and not enough energy. It is nothing but a state of sloth and torpor. Tinamita. 
more energy should be developed and for this purpose the number of objects for for noting should be increased after noting a sitting the attention should be directed to a spot in the body where the sense of touch is felt and a note made as touching any spot in the leg or hand or hip where where a sense of touch is distinctly felt will serve the purpose for example after noting the sitting posture of the body as sitting the spot where the sense of touch is felt should be noted as touching the noting the noting should thus be repeated using these two objects of the sitting posture and the place of touching alternately uh, as sitting touching sitting touching sitting touching The terms noting, observing and contemplating are used here to indicate the fixing of attention on an object. The exercise is simply to note or observe or contemplate as sitting, touching. Those who already have experience in the practice of meditation may find this exercise easy to begin with. But those without any previous experience may find it rather difficult at first. Rising and falling. A simpler and easier form of the exercise for a beginner is this. With every breath that occurs in the abdomen, a rising falling movement. A beginner should start with the exercise of noting this movement. This rising and falling movement is easy to observe because it is coarse and therefore suitable for beginners. As in schools where sim simple lessons are easy to learn, so also is the practice of vipassana meditation. A beginner will find it easier to develop concentration and knowledge with a simple and easy exercise. Again, the purport of Vipassana meditation is to begin the exercise by contemplating prominent factors in the body of the two factors of mentality and materiality. The former is subtle and less prominent mentality, while the later materiality is coarse and more prominent at the outset therefore the usual procedure for an inside meditator is to begin the exercise by contemplating the material elements with regard to materiality uh, it may be mentioned it may be mentioned here that derived materiality upada rupa is subtle and less prominent while the four primary physical elements mahaputta rupa earth water fire and air are coarse and more prominent the latter should therefore have priority in the order of objects of contemplation in the case of rising and falling, the outstanding factor is the air element, or vayudato, the process of stiffening and the movements of the abdomen noticed during the contemplation are, no, are nothing but the functions of the air element. Thus, it will be seen that the air element is perceptible at the beginning. According to the instructions of the Satipatthana Sutta, one should be mindful of the activities of walking, 
while walking, of those of standing, sitting and lying down while standing, sitting and lying down respectively. One should also be mindful of other bodily activities as each of them occurs. In this connection, it is stated in the commentaries that one should be mindful primarily of the air element in preference to the other three elements. As a matter of fact, all four primary elements are dominant, dominant in every action of the body and it is essential to perceive any, of, any one of them. At the time of sitting, either of, two, either of the two movements of rising and falling occurs conspicuously with every breath and a beginner should be made by noting these movements. Some fundamental features in the system of vipassana meditation have been explained for a general information. The general, uh, general outline of basic exercises will now be dealt with. Outline of basic exercises When contemplating rising and falling, the disciple should keep his mind on the abdomen. He will then come to know the upward movement or expansion of the abdomen on breathing in and the downward movement or the contraction on breathing out. A mental note should be made as rising for the upward movement and falling for the downward movement. If these movements are not clearly noticed by simply fixing the mind on them. One or both hands should be placed on the abdomen. The disciple should try not to change the manner of his natural breathing. He should neither attempt to slow breathing or slow breathing by the retention of his breath, nor quick breathing or deep breathing. If he does not change the natural flow of his, breath, of his breathing, he will soon tire himself. Oh, I read that wrong. If he does change the natural flow of his breathing, he will soon tire himself. He, therefore, he must therefore keep to the natural rate of his breathing and proceed with the contemplation of rising and falling. On the occurrence of the upward movement of the abdomen, the mental note of rising should be made, and on the downward movement of the abdomen, the mental note of falling should be made. The mental, no the mental notation of these terms should not be vocalized. In Vipassana meditation, it is more important to know the object than to know it by a term or a name. It is therefore necessary for the disciple to make every effort to be mindful of the movement of rising from its beginning to its end, and that of falling from its beginning to its end, as if these, as if these movements are actually seen with the eyes. As soon as rising occurs, there should be the move there should be the knowing mind close to the movement as in the case of a stone hitting a wall the movement of rising as it occurs and the mind knowing it must come together on every occasion similarly the movement of falling as it occurs and the mind knowing it must come together on every occasion When there is no other cons conspicuous object, uh, the disciple should carry on the exercise of noting these two movements as rising, falling, rising, falling, and rising, falling. 
while thus being occupied with this exercise. There are many, there may be occasions when the mind wanders about. When concentration is weak, it is very difficult to control the mind, though it is directed to the movements of the rising and falling. The mind will not stay with them, but will wander to other places. This wandering mind this wandering mind should not be let alone. It should be noted as wandering, 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 as soon as it is noticed that it is wandering. On noting once or twice, the mind usually stops wandering. Then the exercise of noting rising and falling should be continued. When it is again found that the mind has reached a place, it should be noted as reaching, reaching, reaching. Then the exercise of noting rising and falling should be reverted to as soon as these movements are clear. On meeting with the person in the imagination, it should be noted as meeting, 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 meeting. After which the usual exercise should be reverted to. Sometimes the fact that there is mere imagination is discovered when one speaks with that imaginary person and it should and it should then be noted as speaking speaking the real pur purport is to note every mental activity as it occurs. For instance, <clears throat> it should be noted as thinking at the moment of thinking and as reflecting, planning, knowing, attending, rejoicing, feeling lazy, feeling happy, disgusted, etc. As the case may be on the occurrence of each activity. The contemplation of, ma of mental activities and noticing them is called citta nupassa. No. Contemplation of mind. Because people have no practical knowledge in vipassana meditation, they are generally not in a position to know the real state of mind. This naturally leads them to the wrong view of holding mind to be a person or a self or a living entity. They usually believe that imagination is I. I am thinking. I am planning. I am breathing. I am knowing and so forth. They hold that the exercise that they hold that there exists a living entity of self which grows up from childhood to adulthood. In reality, such a living entity does not exist, but there does exist a continuous process of elements of mind which occur uh, singly one at a time, in succession. The practice of contemplation is therefore being carried out with the aim of discovering the true nature of this mind-body complex. As regards the mind and the manner of its arising, the Buddha, the Buddha stated in the Dhammapada, verse 37, Durangamang Ikacharang as asarirang kuhasayang ye chitang sanyamisanti 
Mukanti Mara Pantana Faring far, wandering alone, formless and lying in a cave, those who do restrain the mind are sure released from Mara's bonds. Faring far, mind usually wanders far and wide, while the yogi is trying to carry on with the practice of contemplation in his meditation room, he often finds that his mind has wandered to many, of, many far off places, towns, etc. He also finds that his mind can wander to any of the far off places which has previously which he has previously known at the very moment of thinking or imagining. This fact is discovered with the help of contemplation. Alone, mind occurs singly, moment to moment in succession. Those who do not perceive the reality of this believe that one mind exists in the course of, uh, of life or existence. They do, they do not know that the new minds are always rising at every single moment. They think that the, that the seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching and thinking of the past and of the present belong to one and the same mind. And that three or four acts of seeing, hearing, touching, knowing usually occur simultaneously. These are wrong views. In reality, single moments of mind arise and pass away continuously, one after another. This can be perceived on gaining considerable practice. The cases of imagination and planning are clearly perceptible. Imagination passes away as soon as it is noted as imagining, imagining, and planning also passes away as soon as it is noticed planning planning these instances of arising noting and passing away appear like a string of beads the preceding mind is not the following mind each is separate each Oh, each is separate. These characteristics of reality are personally perceptible, and for this purpose, one must proceed with the practice of contemplation. Okay, so I'm going to cut the video off over here, there, and then I'm going to start a new recording because we just went for almost half an hour, and I'm going to have to split it up into a new part. And so um, I'm going to start the next recording just right after this, and we're going to continue with um, formless as we are digging into the meaning of Faring far, uh, the words of the Buddha on in the Dhammapada, verse 37. Faring far, wandering alone, formless, and lying in the cave. Those who do restrain the mind are sure released from our response. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And we're going to do a formal outro. And so we're going to say Namo Buddhasa, homage to the perfectly enlightened one. I can never really remember. Honor to the fully enlightened one. Okay. Yeah, stopping this video and starting the new one. Peace and thank you for listening and peace.